In this Blender video, I'm going to show you how to use a cylinder as a tool to make a folded towel. I'll be using Blender version 2.82a. In this scene, I have a floor, a cylinder, and a plane that will be our towel. I'm going to use Blender's cloth simulator with this plane to make it act like a cloth towel. Then I'm going to animate the position of the cylinder to fold the towel. This is what the process will look like. After the first fold is done, the cylinder rotates to fold the towel in a different direction. The look that I'm going for is not a neatly folded towel, but instead a folded towel that looks a little sloppy. So let's get started. I'll select the towel and then tab into edit mode. Now I'll press A to select all, and then I'll lengthen it on the Y axis by pressing S, then Y, then 2, then Enter. A little later, we're going to be using a subdivision surface modifier. So that the divisions will be the same size on both the X and Y axes, I'm going to divide this towel in half using a loop cut. So I'll press Ctrl R, and then left click, and then right click. Now I'll tab back into object mode. Next I'll add a material to the towel. I'm going to use this towel material that I previously made. This is the node setup for it. I'm using a principled shader with the roughness set to 0 0.9. This is an image texture that I'm using. You can find a link to it in the video description. I'm passing the image texture through a color ramp to give it a blue color. This is applied to the base color of the principled shader. I'm also passing the image texture through a displacement node to give the texture some depth. The displacement scale is set to 0.1. After adding the material, right click the towel and select Shade Smooth. Since this is going to be a towel, we need to add some more geometry to it so that it will be able to bend. So I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier. To prevent the edges from being rounded, select Simple. Then set both the render and viewport subdivision values to 5. Now we'll make this behave like a piece of cloth. So I'll switch to the Physics tab and click the Cloth button. We want this to interact with itself, so I'll open the Collisions section and enable Self Collisions. I'll also change the Distance value to 0.01. .01. When I animate the position of the cylinder, it will be moving for 291 frames. To give the towel a little extra time to finish settling out, I'm going to set the End Frame to 350. The cloth simulation also needs to run for 350 frames, so I'll open the cache section and set the simulation end value to 350. Now I'll switch to the modifier tab. You'll notice that we now have a cloth modifier that was added after our subdivision modifier. The order of these modifiers is important. Now we'll give the towel some thickness by adding a solidify modifier. I'm going to set the offset value to 0 so that the thickness will be centered around the original mesh. Next, we'll smooth the whole thing out by adding another subdivision surface modifier. For this one, set both the render and viewport subdivision values to 2. Now we need to set up the floor to prevent the towel from falling through it. So I'll select the floor, switch to the Physics tab, and click Collision. In the Soft Body and Cloth section, I'll set the thickness outer value to 0.001. This will allow the towel to come very close to the floor. If this value is too large, then the towel will look like it's floating above the floor. Next, I'll set the friction value to 80 to minimize how much the towel will be allowed to slide on the floor. Now we need to set up the cylinder so that it will interact with the towel. So I'll select the cylinder and click Collision. I'll keep all of the default values. To save time, I've already set up the keyframes for the cylinder. I'll come back to this to show you what I've done, but first let's bake the cloth simulation. So I'll select a towel, and in the cache section I'll click the Bake button. I'll pause the video until this is done. It's done baking now. If you need to make any changes after baking, then you can click the Delete Bake button make your changes, and then bake it again. Now let's go back and look at the cylinder keyframes. This is the starting position of the cylinder at frame 1. It moves straight up until it reaches frame 50. Then it moves down and to the side until frame 100. At frame 101, the cylinder is quickly moved away from the towel. 
Then at frame 102, the cylinder is rotated 90 degrees and moved below the floor. At frame 110, the cylinder is moved into place and is ready to begin the second fold. By delaying the second fold until frame 110, the towel has time to settle a little. This sequence repeats until three folds are completed. Then at the end, the towel is allowed time to settle out. If you set up the camera, then this makes a nice animation. I think the Blender's cloth simulator does a good job making this look like a real towel. If your end goal is not an animation, but instead you just want a folded towel object, then you can achieve this by applying a couple of the modifiers. To do this, select the towel and switch to the modifier tab. Before we apply any modifiers, you can see that the towel changes when I scrub through the timeline. The order that we apply the modifiers is important. The first one to apply is the first subdivision modifier that we added at the very top. The second modifier to apply is the cloth modifier. Now when I scrub the timeline, you can see the cylinder move, but the towel does not. I'll switch to rendered view to see what this looks like. Well that concludes this video. Thanks for watching and please subscribe and leave a comment.